Hey everybody, it's Angela, and I'm going to alter this cookbook today. And this is one a friend was going to donate to Goodwill, so I snagged it. It's from 1959. It had some weird recipes in it. You know, it's the 50s. They have all these jello molds and uh, liver puffs. And I don't know, my husband and I had a good laugh over some of the recipes in here. And it just wasn't stuff that I would have made. I might cut out a few uh, recipes to keep. So I took the pages out, and you can see it's not perfect there, but I didn't want to damage this interior spine. And you need a book with an interior spine to put a binder mechanism in. And so I wanted to go ahead and show putting the, the mechanism in the book. So you can see there's the binder rings, and I've cut out two pieces of cardstock. They're about cereal box weight. And I'm just going to mark the holes for my mechanism onto those and then cut some holes pre and then you need to pre-cut those and then I'm going to sandwich that on each side of that interior spine to beef that up um, because you know removing all those glued in pages um, you know can damage the mesh and stuff like that so um, this is going to help support and strengthen that whole area and in order to adhere it inside the book I'm going to use some Liquitex matte gel medium uh, which is just a glue like Mod Podge, uh, which you could use, or you know any kind of good uh, good glue. And there I slipped the one in, and you can see I made a little pencil mark on the top of each of those, so I'd know which direction to put my uh, cardboard pieces to make sure those holes I punched still lined up. Now I am going to put the glue all on these rough pages where I tore it out because those will soak up a lot of the um, adhesive. So if you just put it on your uh, cardboard spine piece and then put it on there, it probably wouldn't hold because those torn pages would like absorb all the glue. So now I'm putting a coat onto the back of this spine piece. And then because I put a mark on the top, and I line it up. Now I know that my holes, my punched holes, do line up between that spine area. And because there's a little bit of a crack here and I want to strengthen up those two pages that I left, the two cover sheet pages, I am going to use just a little bit of Scotch quick dry adhesive to kind of fill those cracks and glue that those two end pages to the new spine that I've inserted in here. It just kind of cleans that up and strengthens it as well. So I'm just kind of going through, trying not to get too messy because I'm just going to leave the raw chipboard exposed. I'm not going to color it or cover it for this particular one because it's a country cookbook, so I want it to have kind of more of a country feel. And now that I've got that, it needs to dry completely, so I'm just going to put some clips here on each side and um, let it dry and while I do that I usually while it's drying I usually start cutting all my pages and doing that but um, I'll do a final flip through here in a few minutes so there it's all dry and I've taken my pokey tool and just kind of poked that mesh spine that was between the two sets of holes and now I'm taking the base of my post. And I'm sorry my head is in the way, but you got to, this is the most finicky part, and this first one was a little bit more difficult for me. You want to slide it up to the hole and then catch it in your pokey tool there. And then once you've got it all lined up, you can just smash the chipboard down, see, and it just pops right up through there. So this next one goes a lot easier. Again, I just slide it between the two, the book cover and the spine, and get it to the hole, and then just pop it through. So there are my two posts. I put the binder mechanism on that, and then these are the two screws that go into the two posts that I inserted. And so that it's as easy as that. Um, and I really love being able to turn any old book into a binder, essentially. So there we go, there I have my whole binder ready. And now I'm gonna go through some of the um, 
products that I used in this and then do a final flip through. So I had two pads of this Homestead by Authentique paper and so I'm going to go ahead and use almost a whole pad of that in this binder. And I used a whole bunch of these Elizabeth Craft dies, this pocket insert, um, this one with the notebook edge page, this one with the scalloped edge page, and they've already got the holes cut for me to go in that six ring binder. This one that makes a po top loading pocket page, these double stack tags, and this pocket tag, and this kind of cook book cover and then I used a bunch of my generic um, flower dies from my stash that I always just kind of keep on my desk and then this Echo Park um, die set that I used the word homemade out of it. Um, I pull some basic gray book plates from my stash to put I use one of those on my front cover and I use like one each of this Create 365 and this Carpe Diem stickers, but when I go to put the pictures in, I'll that's what I'll use to decorate it. And then this little yellow bicycle, I use a tag out of that. And then this canvas corp, I use a folder from it. I think I just use one folder out of this pack and one folder out of this Seven Gypsies pack and some Seven Gypsies natural tabs. These are from like 2005 out of my stash. So um, yeah, pretty, pretty old stuff I'm using up here and some basic gray metal dots, some silver dots. Okay, so here is the finished book. I went pretty simple on it because it is, you know, like I said, a country cookbook. I'm not gonna use it for recipes. I'm gonna use it for my grandkids when they come to cook and I'm gonna take pictures and put in this. So there are all the flowers I made from the authentic paper, and I also used these three little charms from my stash, a spatula, some measuring spoons, and a cookie jar. I put a little bow on there made from some twine, and the chickens are just fussy cut out of the authentic paper. So really simple. And of course I just left the front page um, the same, and then I used the Elizabeth Crafts um, little cookbook uh, page with the little um, kind of egg beater on there. And I just put homemade, food and family, love this, and one of my flowers, and that's kind of my introduction page. And then I just kind of did a base. So I'll decorate this more when I put photos in here, but that card is a cut apart from the authentic paper with one of the Seven Gypsies tabs on it. This is an old October afternoon piece, I believe, from my stash and then another cut apart card from the authentic paper. I love that. So it's like kind of like me cooking with my grandchildren. So um, yeah, so I want to take pictures of them with grandma and grandpa in the kitchen to put in here. One of the canvas corp things, the Elizabeth Craft notebook edge, another card from the authentic paper. I love that chicken paper. This is the Elizabeth Crafts tags and um, that's from the Yellow Bicycle. That is a Cosmo Cricket tag, and then those are from Elizabeth Crafts. And I also used, um, you can see on the tops of the tags and some of the pages, I used right there the reinforcement reinforcers that I have a whole bunch of them from Elizabeth Crafts. I bought their variety pack, and then I have some from different packs in there as well. Again, just another page, another cut apart with one of those canvas tags. This is the Seven Gypsies folder. I love the scallop edge uh, page. Another cut apart card. Some little chicken wire things, some vintage pictures. These are the two stacked tags from Elizabeth Crafts and some of the reinforcers on it. Another piece from October Afternoon, kind of about gardening or picking your vegetables. So this page is the Elizabeth Crafts top loading 
pocket page. Just use that. There's the Elizabeth Crafts tag I used as a tuck spot. And then that's the little arrow insert page. That's again another probably October afternoon piece from my stash. Another set of stack tags. I really like that die set. And so that is pretty much um, my finished book. And like I said, I will decorate this more when I put the, the photographs in, but this gives me a good base to start working on. And I think that the grandkids will like it if I put all different kinds of memories of them cooking and helping grandma and grandpa, you know, make pizza or cookies or whatever we do. And that maybe one of the grandkids will want to have this book in the future. And so that is the finished project. If you have any questions or anything on any of the products or techniques that I use, please just leave me a comment down below. And thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.